All right, so let's do this. This will be the battery build part. It will be a 14 by 6, as I've indicated before. I've already started some of them, but we'll go ahead and we'll get the rest of them out of the way. I will be following the Tesla version. Um, basically, I'll run brass strips in between the cells and then run fuse wire out to the sides. So you basically put your brass strips in, cut them to length, and then you can use eighth inch resistors to create the actual fuses. Not very big, actually really hard to get a hold of and work with them. So what that does is that if all six of these are in parallel and say this cell goes bad, if it shorts itself out, the rest of the pack will start to dump current into it and it will start to actually draw down the rest of the battery and or actually create a fire. So by using the resistor legs, you just go from the battery to the strip. You do that with all six of them. And then if the fuse uh, is in the way, when this battery shorts out, it should technically burn up the fuse and that would still leave you with five good cells in this row and not lose the entire pack. So you'll see how they go together here in a little bit. So let's just go ahead and get some of these little dots done. I don't really try to stay on the cells too long. I don't want them to get overly hot, just like anybody else does. Now that I'm sitting on it on for too long anyway. Let's go over here. You don't need very much, just a small little bit. And then you can just move on to the next one. Keep your soldering iron nice and hot. A nice chisel tip on the end of it. That'll spread the heat out a little bit faster. Then it'll allow these to go a lot faster on here. I can try and get this one. There we go. Now obviously these are not so much centered because that brass strip runs up through the middle of both cells, so I want to try and set it off to one side at least, so that way I don't set the brass strip right on top of it. Now like some of the other people have actually stated, you don't want really big thick solder. You don't need thick solder, you need thin solder so that way it actually melts down quicker and then you can just tap it and go. You don't have to worry about trying to sit on the cells for a really long time. With thicker solder, you have to actually heat it up longer to get it to solidify or to uh, melt down and actually stick to the cell. Some people, they prefer regular solder and use a flux pen. Some people use solder with flux in it already. That's what I'm using here. This is just what I have. I have better solder at work, but obviously I'm not at work. So I think this is 0 0.025 in diameter. All right, 
it's all welded. Now, as you should be able to see, they are just small, nice little silvery dots. It's not a real big dot at all. You don't need a huge one. You just need enough to be able to make the connection. So let's go with the brass strips now. So ordered mine through Amazon. It's 0 0.016 thick by one quarter inch wide by 36 inches long. You can order them, they ship them to you obviously, and then once you get a hold of them, you can use them about any which way you want to. If you want to run them all the way down the cells and do it that way without fuses, you can. Or in my case, I'm going to use them in between. So, real easy to cut, nothing major. Just a regular Gerber with a pair of scissors in it. You can just lay it in between there and see where you want to cut it at. I'm going to go right in here. And then you can just cut it. Alright, so there's the last one. Now I don't recommend cutting them over the batteries all the time because you get in a bad habit of doing that. And once you get all these done and you flip it over, if you happen to drop a bar across the cells, they're going to be connected on the bottom side and you're going to have a really bad problem. It's going to arc. So, now that we've got that, get some of these little resistors out. Just order them in a hundred pack. I mean, you can use actual wire for the size. I don't remember what the size is, but these just happen to be the easiest. We will start in the middle. Let's get some of these out of the way so they don't lose them. simply do get the solder loosened up again get your resistor leg down in it and hold it I don't like the look of that one there we go that's a little better and there's one. Uh, sometimes I do this one resistor at a time, make sure to get it soldered to the cell, and then I go to the strip. Sometimes I go just like I'm doing here, because this is actually the first one that I've built that is a staggered cell setup. Typically you order cell holders in different sizes, but they put them square with one another. These happen to be offset from one another. example these are square ones so if you run a strip down through the middle of it the legs would just go straight on across these are staggered so this is going to be a first for me but either which way it shouldn't be an issue solder it to the brass strip. Once 
get them on there. Come back with a pair of nippers, side cuts, flush cuts, whatever you want to call them, whatever you want to use. You simply trim it off. Now you don't want to get rid of that because that in and of itself has a whole nother leg on this side. So if this one is too short, which it isn't, if you absolutely had to, you could turn it over and use the other side for a whole nother fuse. So I cut them off, set them over to the side. Now the only thing that I'm noticing is, is that given my first time on the staggered cells, I'm going to have to move the brass strip solder point more of an end line between the two cells so that way it's a little more straight. Not only does it look better, but it'll keep from having this regular and then maybe a short leg on this side. So I'll go ahead and get the rest of these done. Alright, and like that, the other side's done. That saves about seven minutes you can burn up elsewhere on YouTube. Now, during the intermission, I did go ahead and take the time to go ahead and make the leads that are going to come out for the positive end and the negative end. I did pre tin them a little bit. They're not fully saturated, but they will work. It looks like I did miss some, so I'll catch those up later. But for now, we'll go ahead and we'll get the end leads on. For this, I bring out a little bit bigger of a soldering iron. Just make sure that when you're doing these, don't ever expose the other end of it, just for the simple fact that do, once you do get this on here, actually this is a live pack as it is, but you don't want anything touching and getting it to arc. Because One thing that I do see a lot of videos, a lot of people build packs like this and many other ways, but the one thing that a lot of people don't ever talk about or actually show is cold solder joints. Not a whole lot of people check for them. Cold solder joints would be as the, even though it looks like it's soldered from here to here, that it's a cold solder joint and there's not actually a connection from here to here. So in order to do that, I always build my packs and then I check for continuity. Now you can check it a lot of different ways. Some people actually use small LEDs, but I prefer a good old multimeter, set it for sound, and then you can simply start here. I usually choose the battery. I don't choose the solder joint. I choose the battery because that is ultimately the end point. So if it goes to your battery, solder joint, resistor leg, strip. So I just start here and touch the strip. And as you can hear it beeps, so that means I have continuity. That one's good. So you can stay on the strip and just go each battery down the line and check it. Every one of those has continuity between it and the strip, so those are all good. So, now that that's done, as in the other video, this goes into a case. Let me get the case out here. Make sure I get the right piece. Get it fitted down in there. Uh, simply tuck this down. Feed the wire through the end of it. Ah, 
There they are. So six screws that they supplied. So that would be all six screws. One 14S 6P pack. There is supposed to be a little carrying handle that goes in there, but it's really flimsy, cheap plastic. I do not trust it. This is a decent little battery. It's pretty hefty. So there you have it. Later, I will be installing an XT60 on the ends of these. And I will also run it through the battery charger. Um, I will also pull this back apart and make sure that all the cells are balanced out and then run it through the battery charger again. If it does not balance out, I can individually challenge, uh, balance each of the rows and we will go from there. So by all means, like, subscribe, get notified. There will be more on this. I have more of the actual electric bike. I have to do the assembly and everything else on it. So this will be part of it. Stay tuned for more.